Welcome back to Status Detail and welcome to Westmont Porsche. The car is in storage at a top secret facility that's part of Westmont that we can't even show you, can't tell you where it is, but we are going to take a quick trip over there and we'll show you the car. Hiding behind that beautiful shark blue GTS is the 992 GT3 Touring. This is Rob, he's the sales consultant taking the car cover off. He will talk later in the video about the port and kind of what that is and why cars end up in the port. And obviously the previous 992 Touring, we did had a lot of problems and that car was in the port for a long time. This car was not in the port at all. It was manufactured and shipped directly to the dealership. A quick inspection of the paint shows some swirl marks. Now, none of these are horrible, but the back bumper is kind of bad and the rocker panels are kind of bad. But outside of that, the car is in pretty good condition. Some of you are watching this and saying, Evan, this is pretty good condition, question mark. And my answer to you is go watch my other video on the other GT3 Touring and you will see how bad that car was and why I'm saying this is in pretty good shape. Overall, this car was in pretty good condition, but I did find some secret damage later in the video. Oh, I've said way too much. This ain't what you want. 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 Fast forward roughly two months and the GT3 Touring arrives at status detail on what was probably the coolest, most impressive trailer I have ever seen. The car is on this rail system and basically automatically removes itself from the trailer so no one has to climb into the car, crawl into the car. A lot of minor swirl marks and marring can happen when a person climbs into a car to remove it from a trailer so this process is ideal. They get in the car like you would get into any car and then drive it back the rest of the way and deliver it to me. This trailer was about $80,000 and that there's only a handful of these in the United States and that's why they move so many exotic cars like Koenigseggs and they've also moved Post Malone's cars. If you're shipping a car to status detail from out of state long distance then Unlimited Auto Trans is my recommendation currently. Now that the car is at status, safe and sound, we can get started on a detail. You can see we start with 23 miles. Interestingly enough, the car did arrive kind of dirty and kind of dusty and I'm not really sure what happened here because as we previously showed, the car was in a warehouse with a car cover on it. So at some point in time, it appears the car cover was potentially removed and the car sat somewhere in an environment that promoted lots of dust. This isn't a huge deal, but then we look over some of the areas of the car and there's kind of large rub marks in places where the car had been rubbed or something touched it. And when you have dust like that, that's a great way to basically induce marring or swirl marks. The entire car looked like this, even including the barrels of the wheels. And like I just showed, the car had 23 miles on it, so it wasn't driven. This was just from sitting in a warehouse. Guys, who did this? Because the wheels were not that dirty, I probably could get away with spraying Brake Buster and then foaming it, letting it dwell, and then rinsing it back off. However, I still did agitation. It just seems like the right thing to do to make sure these are really, really clean before we do ceramic coatings on the wheels later on. Brake Buster is far and away my favorite, mainly because it works really well, but also because it's great value. It's not very expensive. I also get a lot of questions about Brake Buster. People ask me, how do I use it? How do I dilute it? And the dilution ratio is really simple. I don't dilute it. I just use it straight out of the bottle, put it in my sprayer and I spray it on. Now, if you're like a car wash doing a lot of washes, like you're washing 50 cars a day or something, yeah, you might want to dilute the product so you're getting better value out of it. After the wheel is clean, we spray Car Pro Hydro or you can also use Wet Coat. And when you put that on, it's gonna make it really hydrophobic. It's gonna make it super easy to dry. And I believe I mentioned that in my GT4 RS video, my previous video. You'll see I take the pressure washer nozzle out and then spray like a large amount of water into the rotor. That's because on carbon ceramic rotors, I wanna make sure I'm rinsing all the chemicals out of the rotor, especially the inside of that rotor. You can see the water beading from Hydro alone is really amazing. And depending on the ceramic coating package you do with us, this might be the only thing we do, or we might do just this, plus we'll do ceramic on the face of the wheel, or we'll ceramic the entire wheel. It just depends on the ceramic coating package that you choose. There's a difference between loose contamination and like I've been driving the car for a month and it's really embedded and requires agitation to remove it. When it's loose like this, just rinsing the car alone will actually get like 99% of the dirt off. 
Now, after we do that, we still need to go through the proper steps of doing a really proper wash here. So we're using Gion foam in a foam cannon. This is diluted pretty strong. And when I say strong dilution, I mean there's a lot of soap in it. I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna let it dwell for a while. And I really wanna go the extra mile here to make sure that this car doesn't get any swirls or scratches or anything during my wash process. Because as we previously showed, it did look like the paint was in pretty good shape. So I would like to preserve that as much as possible so I'm not inducing new swirl marks in that I'm then going to have to remove during the paint correction step. Notice the car is mostly in the shade here, so we're not worried about any of this drying out or giving water spots, and it's also very cold out when it's very cold out. It actually helps soap not dry out and not get water spots because things don't really evaporate. So that is one of the wonderful pros of washing a car when it's very cold outside. Now, after this is all done, you will have to rinse this all back off and this will remove a lot of dirt, especially if the car was considerably more dirty with embedded dirt that had been sitting for months, for example, this would have really minimized that dirt in this step. After all that, we're gonna foam the car again. So this is the second foam and technically the third cleaning. We had the first rinse, then the second foam, then another rinse. This is the foam that's eventually going to end up being the contact foam. So we're gonna go in there with the wash pad and actually contact the paint with this round of foam. I've really fully embraced the multiple microfiber wash process. So I really don't use grit guards anymore. I don't use wash pads anymore. This pad is folded into fourths. It's double sided, which gives me eight sides. And basically every time I touch a new panel on the car, I am switching sides and using a fresh side. So basically I'm touching the car every time with a brand new towel. This is a far more clean way to work in my opinion versus using a wash pad that by the end of the car has touched the entire car. And even if I'm rinsing that out, I'm still probably carrying some dirt with me from the front of the car onto the back of the car or onto from the top to the bottom. I get a lot of funny comments on YouTube about how I'm blowing dirt all over the car and you have to remember this is loose dirt like the dust from the beginning. Anything that's blowing off the wash pad is mainly going into the rain gutter and the windshield and anything that's actually ending up on the hood will just be pressure washed off in my final rinse at the end. For people who are truly triggered by me washing the towels on the windshield, I do have a new recommended method that will keep dirt off the car guaranteed. The second to last step outside is to really give a nice thorough rinse. We wanna make sure we get all the soap suds and everything off the car. You can never over rinse a car. So we really go the extra mile and spend a lot of time rinsing. The final step is blow drying. And especially on wheels, you can just see how good Hydro is. I, I talk about this product a lot because it probably is my favorite uh, product in my car care store. And just in general, it's one of my favorite detailing products, Hydro and Wet Coat. It makes the car so easy to dry and it makes the wheels so easy to dry. Speaking of easy to dry, the paint is very difficult to dry. Because it has no protection on it and because we did such a deep decon wash, we really strip anything off that was on there to begin with, which was nothing. And we did not put hydro or anything on here because we're about to do paint correction and we don't need a uh, hydrophobic sealant like that to interfere with the paint correction and the abrasives that are in the polishes and compounds we're going to use. So this step takes a very long time because there is no protection. Now, most people might want to jump into this step by just using towels, but because the paint is kind of so bare and there's so little protection, that would introduce scratches and marring more easily than just simply blow drying slowly. When I'm done with the wash, the car actually looks pretty good. And part of this is deceiving because it's very cloudy out and the cloudy day kind of gives like a fake softbox appearance that can really make surfaces look really beautiful and really smooth and really clean and really glossy. The reality is when we pull this car inside in a second, you're gonna see there are some imperfections, there are some swirl marks, there are things that need to be fixed. So a clean car like this can be very deceiving, especially on the kind of lighting that the day gives you. If it was a bright sunny day, it would look very different. Like in my other videos, I did take this car up and down the driveway to clean off the rotors. Now this car does have carbon ceramic brakes and because it has that, they don't rust and have that same appearance as steel brakes. However, it is still wise to clean the chemicals off the rotors and do a quick trip up and down the driveway. And once again, the street was salted, so I did this in the driveway and not in the street. Now we can pull the car inside and it basically will stay inside until the detail is complete. I get a lot of questions on how I get wheels so clean and the answer is really simple. You do it in multiple steps. A lot of people think that I'm just washing these wheels in the wash step and then when I'm done that's it and the wheel cleaning phase is over and that is simply not how I do it and that's not also a possible, it's not a possibility. You can't do it that way because ventilated rotors are going to capture water in them and then they're going to drip out onto your barrels. On a steel wheel car it's going to drip orange rust and on a car like this it's just going to drip clean water because these are CCBs. Regardless of the type of rotors you have it's going to drip water. So once you're done cleaning the car, let it sit for about 30 minutes, let the 
the rotors drain. It's going to put water on the rotors and then you're going to come back and clean them with a microfiber towel and some quick detailer like ceramic detailer, cure, or reload 2.0. That will put protection onto the barrels while also cleaning any residual dirt that's dripped out of the rotors. And that's how I get perfect photos with perfect wheels on my Instagram stories and in the final shots in my videos. Before we take a proper look at the paint, let's check in with Rob and talk a little bit about the port. My name's Rob Johnson, I'm from Westmont Porsche. So kind of one of the things that uh, Evan and I were chatting about was why cars might be stuck at port. You know, there's a lot of factors that can kind of come into why a car might not, you know, get delivered quickly. Yeah, it's waiting for transport, gets into port, waiting for a specific part, let's say, you know, something that's happening now, it's like we have Bose amplifiers. We're just waiting for amplifiers to come in, the car might get into port, wait for a, you know, let's say, uh, the amplifier to get put in the car to get shipped to the dealership. Or it's waiting for, let's say, um, you know, a transportation truck to come in, grab the car, and make its way to the dealership. So, at the end of the day, some cars might sit, some cars might, are, might go quickly. Um, story about this one, this car came in, was completely built properly and made its way to the dealership, bing, bang, boom, it was quick. Um, so it got on the truck, came to our dealership, we were able to take all the protection off and it looks pretty good, um, so. The port is kind of this ridiculous, crazy Matrix Narnia place that we don't understand and a lot of crazy stuff can happen there and I've actually started to learn more about this and we'll probably talk about it more in future videos. Please don't comment that the dealership is terrible or that Rob did something wrong because they literally did everything the way we asked them to do it. Rob is fantastic, Westmont Porsche is fantastic, they did exactly what we asked. It's interesting that this car has kind of a lot of swirl marks in the factory PPF because that is a surface that is relatively swirl resistant so for it to have so many marks on it would mean something kind of serious would have happened to cause those marks in the first place. It sounds crazy to say this, but this is pretty good in the sense that I just don't have to do a tremendous amount to fix major defects on this car. I'm sure a lot of you are still watching this and going, that's crazy. This car has major problems and for a brand new $300,000 car, this should look better than this. And I agree with you, but the bottom line is, guys, based on what we're used to seeing, this is pretty good and nothing here was too complicated to fix. The worst of the problems were on the back where the license plate area of the car is. Now, there were pretty serious sanding marks back here. And again, this wasn't anything that I couldn't fix. This is nothing that we can't undo, but this is the worst section on the car. And you can see there are very, very serious holograms and leftover just sanding marks. It doesn't hurt that this is also a very low visibility part of the car that the sun would virtually never hit in the first place. Place, which would make this something hard to see even potentially in the factory when they were going over it because it's a, it's a spot that's easy to miss. I'm not really giving them excuses for why it's like this, but I could understand that this would be easier to miss in a quality check versus say a hood or the top of the wing, which would be very high visibility. Removing the factory PPF on the hips is pretty easy. We're gonna use a heat gun and basically soften or loosen up the glue a little bit. And then when we pull it off, it comes off very seamlessly and very easy. If you get the heat mixture here wrong, what happens is when you pull it off, you get a lot of adhesive residue on the panel, which is very frustrating because it's very time consuming to remove that. And if you're not careful or if you're inexperienced in removing that kind of residue, it's very, very easy to scratch and mar the surface of the paint, which will then require more paint correction. If you heat it correctly, you'll basically pull off the piece totally perfectly and there'll be no adhesive residue behind. Now, when we fully pull this piece off, what we found was quite alarming. It was actually one of the most surprising things I think I've ever found on a Porsche, let alone a $300,000 very expensive car. You can see there are some very, very serious scratches in the lower part of this rocker panel and they're basically completely behind the PPF. Now what's interesting about this is even when I'm not using the spotlight to show you this, I can see this in the shop just under normal shop lights, which means whoever caused this damage would have obviously known they had did this and they clearly did not try to fix them. The point is, and the reality of this is, Whoever applied the paint protection film to this car knew there were major defects here and they put the film over it, basically hoping and knowing that it would cover it up. The reality is if you look where the adhesive starts and stops from the PPF, you can see that the mark continued even where there was no paint protection film. Something this large, which is maybe 12 to 15 inches long in the bottom, should have gotten caught and it's shocking that it didn't get caught and it's shocking that essentially it was covered up and shipped out this way. I can't fully understand how this happened to the rocker or who installed this or how it got through quality check and it just simply left me kind of feeling like this. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. 
I go through this multiple times, even with different polishers to try and remove this. I'm using a smaller polisher here because I want to really focus just on the scratch area and I don't want to remove any paint in any additional areas that are you know, north or south of that scratch. So I'm really trying to focus with the three inch only on the scratched area here because I'm really trying to manage how much paint I'm leaving on the car. And I only want to reduce the paint depth in the spot the scratch is in and not in any other location on this piece. I literally went back and forth and did this probably six or seven or eight times. I lost count. The average detailer might not fix this the way that I fixed it because if the average detailer goes into this, they might have wet sanded and compounded and it would have been potentially really easy to burn through the paint because this was a scratch that was so deep that if you keep chasing it, eventually you will run out of paint, which means you have to draw a line in the sand eventually and just say, hey, that's all we can do. We have to be happy with this and we have to walk away. And for a perfectionist, that is an incredibly difficult thing to do but you have to know when to do it sometimes. And that's why you pay a detailer like me. Now, I like to be upbeat in my videos and tell you guys, and don't worry about it because we fixed it. But the reality was this one was so bad that we weren't fully able to actually fix it. Now, I did make it considerably better. The only thing more that I could have done to try and fix it was to wet sand it, but in a section of the car that will have paint protection film on it and will potentially be removed more than once because this is such a high wear area. I wanna make sure the paint is really strong and has a lot of thick to it because I never want to pull a section of rocker PPF off and also pull a full section of paint off with it because that would be an awful situation to be in. So you want to do your best to fix this but you also want to do your best to leave as much paint on the car and find the perfect balance of the right amount of correction but also the right amount of paint on the car so we have really strong paint that will hold up to years and years of paint protection being replaced and just in general just years and years of being beautiful OEM perfect paint. On this car, we did have to do some sticker removal because we were doing a full front paint protection film install. So the doors were not going to have PPF. However, the front fenders were going to have PPF. And for that reason, we had to remove the vinyl on the front of the fenders. Because if we did not, we would have this air track line on the fenders and it would not match the doors and it would look really weird. If it was full body PPF and you did it, at least it would all match. But when it's only a full front, it's definitely not going to match. So you need to remove this. This process is very similar to the PPF removal process. Only when you're removing vinyl, there's almost never any adhesive left behind. PPF, if you don't heat it right, will almost always leave adhesive and vinyl won't. So this is a little bit more of a relaxed process where we really don't worry too much about how much heat or anything, but the heat does simply make the vinyl come off easier. Taking all these pictures is going to help me match up the stickers when I reapply them because I wanted to make sure that, you know, as close as possible that I could match exactly how they were originally sent from the factory. I get a lot of questions and comments on paint correction and in a future video I will dive a little deeper into the paint correction step because I know a lot of people have questions about it. The new 992 Porsches sometimes do have slightly harder paint than other Porsches, other generations, like the 991.2s had really soft paint. These seem a little harder, but even in that situation, I have really great luck using CarPro Reflect and an HDO orange pad, which you're seeing used right now. And then after this, depending on the package, we do a jeweling step as well. A lot of the gloss you experience and a lot of the gloss that you're seeing on the cars that I work on personally, that gloss comes from the paint correction step. Now the ceramic or the PPF or both, they lock that gloss from the paint correction step in. They're sealing that step in. Then, especially in the case of ceramic, that adds even more gloss on top of the paint correction work. But you wanna make sure you're paying for a really high level paint correction step because a lot of the gloss and shine that you're seeing, that dripping wet look, it's coming from the correction. So if you skip that step, then you're just sealing in more of a basic normal paint appearance. When you do the refinement of a paint correction, you are then sealing in that refined paint that will last for years. If you're doing full body PPF, this is an absolute must. Thankfully, the rest of the correction did go very smoothly. As I mentioned previously in the video, the car was in pretty good shape. Even the sanding marks on the back in that license plate area, none of this stuff scared me. None of this stuff was hard. I wasn't worried about any of it. Once the paint correction step is done, you can see the paint looks absolutely fantastic. We put our spotlight on there and there's just, there's no marks, there's no holograms, there's no scratches, there's no nothing. Sometimes in some of these shots, you might see a little bit of hazing or something and that's typically leftover polish that I just didn't wipe away or I didn't fully prep the car yet, 
with uh, isopropyl alcohol to basically remove it. And that's typically because I know I'm gonna pull it back outside and spray it with water to get rid of all the dust. But I wipe it off enough that I can see that the paint is perfect so I know I don't have to go back and correct it. It is not necessarily the dealership's job to remedy this problem. It is their job maybe to make sure it is fixed, but that doesn't mean they have to be the ones that are actually fixing it. If you have a car delivered like this and you have paint correction to fix this stuff and you have proof or just even a couple photos of the damage and the swirl marks and whatever's wrong with it, if you send that to your dealer there's a good chance they will write you a check for how much the paint correction was and they'll probably do it and if they don't they don't but it's free to ask something interesting that I thought detailers might find uh, useful and also any DIY people at home who have a Rupos 21 of any of any maker model is that you need to do some service on this once in a while and I actually did not know this until I actually broke my mark too and the gentleman at Rupa's service told me that I needed to put grease on the backing plate and like kind of keep up with it like an oil change on a car essentially. You need to wipe off the grease on the backing plate after every car or every two cars and then you need to reapply new grease. If you do this your polisher will run smoother, it will run cooler because the backing plate won't actually build that much heat up and it'll save the bearing that's in there because if that bearing goes bad you will basically have to ship the polisher or two Rupes for a repair. By the way, Rupes customer service is amazing and their service department is amazing. And this is why we sell Rupes 21s because basically I used that old polisher for a very long time, never lubing this and it completely worked for a very long time, which is very impressive. In the case of most detailers like myself, because we do the film and the detail, our biggest nemesis is going to be polish and compound dust. Because when we are done fixing all the defects in the paint, we create a huge mess of basically millions of specks of dust. The best way to fully remedy this is to pull the car outside, literally foam the entire car again, let that dwell a little bit. That foam will suck and pull all the dust together. Then you can pull out a brush and do all the seams and the emblems and all these little things and all these little spots and they'll clean everything out pretty well. You'll see even in the rinse, I really focus specifically on the vents, on the emblems, and on the headlights. When you think you've gotten all this stuff, there's always one more piece. You cannot overdo this stuff. Now, because it's actually been paint corrected, it blow dries a little easier because the surface of the paint is so smooth and clean. But I really don't want to touch the paint here because the next step essentially is to panel prep the car and then do the paint protection film. So if I scratch or mar anything I accidentally while I'm drying it, I will literally have to paint correct the car again, which will create dust again, which will literally mean I will have to pull the car outside and wash it again. So you have to blow dry the car perfectly in this step or you will end up potentially paint correcting and causing dust and you will chase your tail and potentially lose your mind. From the minute the customer reaches out to us and asks about a detail and paint protection film, we dive into a bunch of different questions to discover how much PPF they need to make sure that they are getting the best value for their ownership and driving style. PPF is a value-based product, which means everyone's idea of value is going to be drastically different, which means some people will only want to do a full front, some people will want to do full body. Some people will want to do a full front with custom other pieces around the car. The previous touring we did did a custom rocker up into that hip area but we did it in two pieces to keep the cost down. This customer prioritized having no seams but still wanted coverage up to the hip like the last car so we ran this piece as a full one piece coverage. So literally this is like tailoring a suit. It's a completely bespoke process. We have this great kind of relationship where Paul does mobile detailing so Paul has to do cars basically perfect perfectly on the first try and then he leaves after the car is done in one day which means nothing can peel back. He, he has a really high focus on durability, right? So when I finish a car with PPF, it usually sits for another couple days in my hands. So if I need to go back and trim something or do something, I can always do that. So I have a higher standard for like aesthetics. Like I want it to be really hard to tell the car has film on it, for example. Now it's hard for, for Paul to do that because if he does that and leaves, then the car might have an edge or something that can pop up and then he's gone. So he can't come back and fix it as easily as I could because I'll just see the car again tomorrow. And because of that, we end up getting really high tier installs in my opinion when there's you know two mines involved versus just one and I think that's a really cool and unique thing about kind of my PPF installation and for people who might be shopping around quotes and things like that for PPF you know we tend to be probably a little more expensive especially our full body wraps are a little more expensive than other people's and in the future they're honestly going to probably be even more expensive so the way they're priced right now is pretty good value in my honest opinion but what you're seeing right now is basically one of the reasons that we charge a little bit more money it's because we spend way more time on the installation process. I wrap a lot of edges like the one you're seeing wrapped right now into these rubber seams and places so you literally cannot see the edge of the paint protection film. You literally won't know the car has film on it because it's not visible. The edge is just literally jammed into a seal like this and you'll never see it. Stuff like this, guys, is so time consuming and it adds a lot of cost 
to the installation so it's not just about the material cost of the film it's about the labor and the hours that we put in in this photo i doubt people can tell me what side of the panel has film on it now i'll be honest i did this car kind of a while ago and when i'm looking at these pictures i actually thought the hood had ppf on it and the fender didn't and after kind of doing the edit i realized that the hood had no film on it and the fender had the ppf on it i literally kind of had to double take most films have a lot of orange peel in them and that's one of the biggest reasons that i love aztec dino shield so much it's because it has basically zero orange peel on it to the point where i literally couldn't tell which panel had film on it in that photo and that's a tremendously big deal to me. Heating, in my opinion, is one of the more boring aspects of it, so we don't typically show this a lot in the videos, but it's a hugely important thing because when you heat these edges, the edges typically stick better, it makes the adhesive stick better, and that means the film won't pop back up, and that's a huge part of the durability. You literally need to do this on every part of the car that basically has anything that's wrapped. That's why I was saying earlier that the price difference can be dramatic because when people are doing plotter cuts and they don't fully wrap edges, you don't really need to heat anything because there's no tension when a film goes 90 degrees around an angle if it's just flat and cut there's really no need for the most part to heat something like that but when we wrap all these edges all of that stuff needs to be heated and typically it needs to be heated multiple times and even the following day I might have to go outside look at something say I don't like the way that looks and I'll heat it again even on a new car there's always a couple little things to do on these cars this car obviously had very low miles but there were still some scuff marks from people getting in and out of the car and the floor mats were flipped upside down which actually I kind of liked that I'm assuming the transport guys did that to kind of save the other side of the floor mat from getting dirty and there's dust all over the place and there's things that need to be kind of lightly touched up and lightly cleaned and it's like before I sit in my brand new car, if like 20 people have been in it before me, it should have that once over nice cleaning just to be fully ready for me to sit in it and really feel like it's like a clean brand new car ready for me. The most important thing for me on any car, even though whether it's new or not, is always to just do a once over cleaning of the steering wheel, the gear shifter and the driver's seat. Now the rest of the car is still gonna get clean, but not as, as carefully or meticulously. But bottom line is lots of people touch that steering wheel, lots of people touch that gear shifter, and there's no reason why we shouldn't do a light cleaning on this stuff especially when you're going to do ceramic coating on all the leather because we really need to make sure there's no dirt on there and then we need to prep it again with alcohol and then we do those ceramic coatings so this is definitely not like a crazy step or a waste of time so we had to reapply these vinyl decals and it's interesting because the only way to purchase these are to get the entire decal so we actually have the back half of the decal to save for later and i was very careful to basically cut this in a way that it would save the back half of the of the decal so as mentioned previously i only needed to reapply the front half of this because the back half was just unaffected it didn't have ppf on it so now that this is going on top of the ppf the appearance of the vinyl stickers will fully match from the door to the fender and that's what we wanted and that's exactly why we removed these in the first place and basically the last step to do is the ceramic coating so we prep the whole car with isopropyl alcohol which in our case would be gian prep it's that pink bottle and that's going to basically remove and dissolve anything that's on the paint so we can do a ceramic coating that's going to bond directly to the paint or in the case of parts of the car the, the paint protection film now the paint protection film as previously mentioned has ceramic coating built into it but i don't trust that to last many many years where i do trust the ceramic and the ceramic that we use actually bonds very very well to the built-in ceramic that's on the car already now sometimes you'll hear people say that especially Aztec installers that some ceramics don't actually bond well and it's because there's a lot of different ceramic coatings out there and a lot of different chemistry behind these products the one that we use does bond extremely well to the Aztec built-in ceramic coating and that's a big deal to have synergy like that between two products a lot of the gloss you're seeing here was from the paint correction process as previously mentioned but a lot of the gloss that we're going to add from this point will be from the ceramic coating so again that's like a synergy between two processes there's gloss from the paint correction but there's also gloss from the ceramic coating when you combine that you get this synergy of like really wild dripping wet gloss I've had a couple customers pick up cars in kind of bad conditions in terms of rain or a slight bit of snow and they drove the car home and they literally text me or call me and say, Evan, what did you do to my car? I drove home in this storm and my car is clean. And, the, and it's like, that's ceramic. That's like one of the coolest parts about ceramic is that it keeps your car cleaner longer. In these shots, you're actually seeing the topper go on. Now we do a dual layer system on most of the cars that we do. You have the option of doing a five year single layer or a seven year dual layer. I always recommend the dual layer coating if it's within the budget, because simply put, it is a better coating. It is more glossy, it is more hydrophobic, it is more self cleaning, and it's more serviceable. And that last one is the most important thing. So if in two years, for example, we wanna do a light polish on the car to knock out some swirl marks, we can do that and we're primarily 
probably going to remove the top coat, which means we can re-add that top coat and keep the bottom base coat unaffected. Usually I use Gion Tire, the blue bottle, but this is CarPro Dark Side. This product is supposed to last longer, and from my experience so far, it looks almost identical, if not completely identical, to Gion Tire. Now it's also interesting that it smells nice because I always say that Gion Tire might be one of the best smelling products in the world for a detailing product smell. Um, dark, dark side definitely smells good. It does not smell bad, but the most important thing here is how it looks. We want that matte satin finish. I want to be able to touch the tire when I'm done and not have anything come off of my hands, which means we're not going to get tire sling on the car and we want durability. And so far it's done everything that it's promised on the label. It's going to take some time for us to test durability because obviously the product is so new. In the very end of the detail, one of the last things I literally do is a, is a, is a once over quality check. And literally, I'm looking for specks of dust that might be in small areas. I'm looking for anything on the carpet I might have missed. If there's one or two specks of dust or a rock or something, I, I want to make sure to the best of my ability I deliver this car in a outrageously obsessive compulsively clean manner. It should look like it just came out of like an operating surgery room that was scrubbed clean. Even things as small as making sure like the rubber trim is pushed fully and completely into place if it was not even. It's a sickness guys. Like I, I, I shouldn't have to do all this stuff but it's like it bothers me if it's out of place and this is kind of what I do with a couple hours of my time at the very very end of the detail. I want to just make sure all of this stuff is fully perfectly squared away. I even repacked this little bag that they gave him that had a, like a car cover in it and a charger and some of that stuff and I kind of organized everything and put it in the trunk. Like I said, the, wh why should this customer spend all this money, ship a car to me and then get his car back and the frunk is all in disarray? That doesn't feel right to me. So everything is kind of organized and put together so when he opens it, it feels like an organized closet, right? Like that's how it should feel and look when a car is redelivered after a status detail. If you enjoyed all the little office memes in the video, please comment below and let me know your I love it! <laughs> That is going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this and you're a fan and maybe you want to send me a car, please reach out. You can go to statusdetail.com and find my information and my email and everything. I would love to hear from you guys. We've gotten so many amazing responses and so many customers shipping cool cars to us. I currently have basically more GT spec Porsche cars coming than the average dealership has allocations for them. Like We are like a Porsche mecca right now for high-level detailing on Porsches and also other cars. We have McLarens, Ferraris, Lamborghini is coming all shipped to us for PPF and ceramic. So I'd love to hear from more customers like that because it's a super cool thing to have fans watch the videos, reach out and say, I love what you do. We want to do business with you. That is an incredibly cool thing. And I'm so grateful for the viewership and for the customers that then reach out. I will see you in another video very, very soon. And there is no shortage of content coming. So if you're not subscribed already and you dig this kind of stuff, definitely subscribe to the channel. Definitely like this video. I have a crazy amount of awesome detailing content coming very, very soon.